Hello, this is Chaudhary Mahmood Anwar. Today I'm gonna brief you about uh, partial least square path modeling and uh, when to use the PLS uh, path modeling. This path modeling technique was developed around 1960s, 70s by Hermann Wald, who was a Swedish statistician. The real name of this path modeling technique is projection to latent structures, PLS. Walt introduced it as an alternative to Lisdrill. Initially, it was used in econometrics. However, its application was extended to chemometrics, a sensory evaluation, and chemical engineering as well. In 1983, Dijkstra found that PLS as an estimator for structural equation model is biased and inconsistent. Therefore, further development of PLS was abandoned. Another term, partial least squares, was also introduced later on and now dominates in social sciences. PLS is actually identical to original Lisdrill model. Here you can see the equations for original Lisdrill model. The first equation is for latent variables and second equation is for indicator variables. In these equations, eta is latent variables, y is indicator variables. Beta and pi are regression coefficients, whereas nu and epsilon are random errors. To develop the PLS model, what you do? Simply replace the latent variables of original Lisdrill model with composites y where the composites are weighted sums of their indicators as shown in the equation. PLS is a two-stage process. First, observed variables are combined as weighted sums that are called composites. Second, the composites are used in separate regression analysis. Applying null hypothesis significance testing by comparing the ratio of a regression coefficient and its bootstrap standard error against student's p distribution. There are two mods in PLS. In mod A, manifest variables are regressed on approximations, as shown in the equation. In mod B, approximations are regressed on manifest variables, as shown in second equation. The mod A is also called a reflective model and mod B is also called formative model. PLS is identical to OLS. PLS estimation is identical to OLS regression on some scales or factor scores. Only difference is that the indicator weights are based on the estimated model and the sample data. Presumed advantages of PLS, that is, an enhanced ability to deal with small sample sizes and non-normal data are not supported by statistical theory or empirical evidence. And that PLS actually has a number of disadvantages that are not widely understood. You have to keep in mind before using PLS in your research. PLS estimates are biased and inconsistent. PLS cannot test a model causality due to lack of an over-identification test. PLS results can be used to validate a structural model is a myth. Bootstrap procedures generally work well only in large samples. It is difficult to recommend PLS when sample sizes are small. PLS compares the ratio of a regression coefficient and its bootstrap standard error against student's p distribution. Therefore, its assumptions, i.e. homogeneity of variance, normal distribution, large-scale sample should be met. PLS uses OLS regression for mod A and mod B. Therefore, regression assumptions should be fulfilled. Model fit criteria in PLS SAM are in their early stage of research, are not fully understood, and are often not useful for PLS SAM. I would like to add this here, that PLS is not a structural equation modeling technique. In fact, literature shows that PLS is a path modeling technique. PLS is suitable for small samples, used for formative model, suitable when the maximum likelihood estimator fails to converge to a solution. All are poor excuses for using PLS.
At this point, my recommendations to the students are they should use AMOS or LISRAIL when they want to use structural equation modeling as their data analysis method. If they are working on formative models, they should use multiple indicators and multiple causes mimic technique in AMOS. If the researchers still think that PLS should be used as an estimator in their research, they should read the following literature. Mark Heredas and Chen, 2013, Ron Cohen Auerman, 2013, Ron Cohen et al., 2016, and McIntosh et al., 2014. After reading this literature, if researchers still think that they should use PLS, then only use PLS if you are convinced that PLS is suitable technique for your study. Hensler mentioned in uh, 2014 in his article, a hammer is a suboptimal tool to fix screws. PLS is a suboptimal tool to estimate common factor models. Just look at this sentence. If you will use hammer to fix screws, of course, the screw and the wall both will be ruined. The same analogy is for PLS and estimates of common factor models. So I would recommend to use structural equation modeling in AMOS or LISRAIL instead of PLS until you can justify that using PLS is appropriate and essential for your study. Thank you very much for attending this session.